Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. When calculating production costs, a firm will use short-run and long-run analysis. Despite the way it sounds, short-run and long-run analysis has nothing to do with time. Instead, it's all about plant capacity and fixed production costs. You see, in the short run, a firm has at least one resource that is fixed in quantity. Usually, that fixed resource is the firm's plant capacity. Plant capacity refers to the number of factories or manufacturing centers that the firm has built in order to produce output. In the short run, the firm has committed to a fixed number of plants and has taken on the overhead costs of operating the facility, including the rent on land, interest payments on loans, and any insurance or business licensing fees. The firm will take on additional variable costs to fill the plant with equipment, machinery, and workers, but the number of plants built by the firm and the costs required to build them will remain fixed no matter the level of output produced by the firm. As a result, the goal of the firm in the short run is to make the best use of its fixed plant capacity and choose the optimal rate of production in order to minimize costs and maximize profits, given its limitations in the short run. Long-run analysis opens up an entirely different set of options for the firm. In the long run, a firm has no fixed costs because all resources are variable. The firm isn't tied down to a set plant capacity, and every resource in the production process can be either increased or decreased at will. Instead of showing a firm what it's capable of producing with set limitations in the short run, long-run analysis allows the firm to plan for future production by comparing the total cost of production at various potential plant capacities. In essence, the goal of the firm in the long run is to carefully select an optimal plant capacity from all possible plant capacities where productive efficiency can be achieved and profits can be maximized at an ideal rate of production. Let's take a closer look at how a firm can use long-run analysis to determine an optimal plant capacity. Assume a major automobile manufacturer is trying to determine the optimal number of factories to operate in order to achieve productive efficiency and maximize profits in the long run. In order to accomplish its long run goals, the firm needs to compare the total cost of producing cars at each potential plant capacity in the short run. Let's assume the firm has five potential plant capacities to choose from, and each of these short run average total cost curves represents the total cost per car at each of these plant capacities. SRATC1 represents the total cost of production per car with one factory in operation. SRATC2 represents the total cost of production per car with two factories in operation. SRATC3 represents the total cost of production per car with three factories in operation. SRATC4 represents the total cost of production per car with four factories in operation. And SRATC5 represents the total cost of production per car with five factories in operation. In order to visualize the changes in total production costs as it scales its output in the long run, the firm can combine the average total cost of production at each plant capacity to create a long run average total cost curve. Using this curve, the firm can carefully select the number of factories to operate in order to minimize costs, achieve productive efficiency, and maximize profits in the long run. Notice that the total costs of production initially decrease and then increase as the firm opens more factories and scales its production. This is due to the various stages of returns that the firm will experience at different plant capacities. For example, as the firm opens its first factory, the average total cost per car is initially high. With only one plant in operation, the firm's low capacity to produce cars hinders its ability to utilize mass production techniques. However, as the firm continues to hire workers and rent capital equipment, 
it will begin to experience increasing returns as workers specialize in their tasks and utilize equipment, enabling mass production to take place and causing the total cost per car to decrease as the firm scales its production level. However, if the firm remains at a plant capacity of one factory, it will eventually experience diminishing returns as additional workers and equipment crowd the factory and hinder production. In the long run, the firm can avoid these higher total costs by expanding its plant capacity to a larger manufacturing center or by opening a second factory. At a plant capacity of two factories, the firm can increase its rate of car production and drive down the average total cost per car by utilizing the space in a second facility to hire more workers and rent additional equipment, which allows specialization and mass production to continue while avoiding diminishing returns. This phase of production, in which average total cost per unit decreases as the firm scales its output, is known as economies of scale. During this phase, the rate at which total production costs increase is slower than the rate at which the firm produces output meaning the firm has a better chance to reduce total cost per unit by boosting their plant capacity and output. As the rate of production increases, the car manufacturer will face the same decision it faced earlier. If it remains fixed at a plant capacity of two factories, it will eventually face increasing total cost per car as mass production is hindered by limited capacity. In order to avoid these higher costs, the firm can expand its plant capacity to a larger manufacturing center, or it can decide to open a third factory. At a plant capacity of three factories, the firm can increase its rate of car production and drive down the average total cost per car by utilizing the space in a third facility, allowing specialization and mass production to continue while avoiding diminishing returns. However, Notice that the average total cost per car is decreasing at a slower rate until it finally reaches a minimum point. Wait, what's happening? At this rate of output, the firm has entered a new phase of production known as constant returns to scale. During this phase, total production costs increase at a rate that is equal to the firm's rate of output. In other words, any change in the quantity of resources acquired will result in a proportional change in output produced. At this rate, boosting car production will no longer cause the average total cost per car to decrease. If the firm decides to continue to scale car production or expand plant capacity, it will actually cause the total cost per car to rise. So what does this mean for the firm? First of all, it means that we can definitively prove that the firm can experience its lowest possible average total cost per car in the long run at this point, which means that this rate of production represents the output level where the firm can achieve productive efficiency in the long run. When a firm is productively efficient, it's wasting the least amount of resources possible while producing output. When producing this level of output at this plant capacity, the firm is producing each car at the lowest possible average total cost and therefore is maximizing the production potential of its land, labor, and capital with as little waste as possible in the long run. From here, if the firm decides to expand its plant capacity so it can continue to scale car production, the firm will enter the third phase of production, known as diseconomies of scale. In this phase, the total cost per unit will rise for the firm as it expands its plant capacity and scales its rate of production. At this point in the production process, the wages and rents paid by the firm to hire workers and acquire equipment increases at a rate that is faster than the rate at which the firm can turn cars out of its factories. In essence, the firm has overexpanded and has grown too large. It's opened too many factories and filled those facilities with too many workers and an excess of equipment, making the firm incredibly costly to manage. For instance, if this automobile manufacturer decides to expand its plant capacity and open a fourth factory, the firm would produce a greater number of cars, but the total cost of acquiring the resources necessary to produce those cars would grow so large that each car produced by the firm would be more expensive to produce. The problem would only worsen if the firm decided to increase its plant capacity again by opening a fifth factory. 
At this point, the firm's plant capacity becomes bigger than its output. The use of capital and other inputs outpaces the production of cars, causing the total cost per unit to increase again, but at an even faster rate. The firm has overshot its optimal plant capacity and mismanaged their resources, leading to skyrocketing costs that outpace production and evaporate profits. In order to operate at productive efficiency in the long run, this automobile manufacturer should analyze and compare the average total cost of production at each plant capacity in the short run and find the optimal plant capacity that allows them to produce output at the lowest possible total cost per unit. Opening three factories appears to be the optimal plant capacity for this firm. Operating at a plant capacity of one or two factories underutilizes resources and leaves the firm with the potential to lower the total cost per car and gain productive efficiency. In essence, the firm would be leaving profit on the table by paying higher total cost per car than necessary. Operating four or five factories means the firm has become too large to manage efficiently, causing waste and excessive costs. These excessive costs means the firm is losing potential profits because it is overproducing in the long run. Clearly, the firm should open three factories and make the best use of its fixed plant capacity in order to minimize costs and achieve productive efficiency at a minimum average total cost per unit in the long run. And that's the long run average total cost curve and economies of scale. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my micro minute video on marginal product and marginal cost, or you can click here for my micro minute video on facts about cost curves. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.